We'll start off today with a two inch brush and I'm gonna place in a very basic, very basic sky. Today, this is gonna be one of the easier skies we've done in a long time. There's my color. It's not just blue, it's actually blue, a little bit of red and a little bit black. I think it would just be too much blue if we did it. Just straight Prussian blue, but you know, <laughs> feel free to do that if you want. Before we go too far, let's look at the paintings that you guys did in my last one. It's always fun to see those. And if you're not doing your painting and sharing it with me, we'll definitely do your, do your version of this one and share it with me. And if I see it in time, I'll get it in the next video and everybody can enjoy it and it'll be good. I didn't mention it, but I do have clear gel and white uh, covering just the sky area. And all that's available on the website if you need it. Now I'm gonna take a shop towel. It's crumpled up and you know, you could, because I just want white clouds. So I'm actually going to paint my clouds in by removing the paint. Now, why do it this way? Well, it doesn't really make any difference right this minute, but wait till we get our trees in. You know, we're gonna do, well, it's, it's no surprise to you, you've seen the thumbnail. Wait till we get our, our pink trees in and our, and our foreground elements. We're gonna be real glad. I believe that everybody's gonna be happy here. You can actually use this a little bit more deliberately than maybe sometimes. You kind of scrub in a, a cloud just by removing the paint, leaving just the stain on the canvas there. Good. And when you're all done with that, just hit it with a blender brush to soften the edges, you know, especially like right up in here. Just hit it with a blender brush, soften the edges. And I'm gonna mix up kind of a soft pink, purple color. I don't know if I'm gonna like that or not. I'm gonna put that up on the canvas and see. You see, I've, I've just done a very basic sketch. Our landscape's not very big today. Sometimes I'll put that horizon a little higher so we have more room, you know, to put stuff in the painting. I'm just gonna tap with a one inch brush. What am I doing with the tapping with a one inch brush? Well, it's not necessarily the best way to paint a tree, but it, it is the best way to paint a tree for the kind of tree that I'm painting right now. I'm painting, I would say far distant background trees. And wipe that brush out. More white. They, it's, it's important that these trees are light at the bottom and a little darker at the top. There we go, see that? Some sort of just background tree line. Not too much red in the background. Red is a foreground color. So just kind of keep that in mind. Obviously, a little red won't hurt anything. I do have large trees kind of growing up here. So don't spend a lot of time here unless you just want the practice. <laughs> now that I've got some color to work with, I'm gonna detail, just add a little detail to the trees, not a lot, just enough to show that we didn't totally forget about these trees. 90% of the work is done with the, with the one inch brush just by tapping, but this little bit of detail brush work, and it makes a little bit of difference. Could you skip it? Absolutely. I think it makes enough difference to warrant the couple seconds that it takes. I've just got a kind of a pink color and I'm just working the pink color into the rest of the color that we already have down. So it's not too, it's not too crazy. I don't know if you'll even notice hardly the color in the camera. I do see it in person. I don't necessarily want it to look at the end like just a bunch of layers, one chopped off, you know, after another one. I kind of want it to look more like it's all growing together, but still layered. I don't know if that's super possible or not, but we'll try. So now I'm gonna work on our areas of land. We are gonna have some rocks down here by the shoreline. Not, not black, just sort of dark. Somewhere in that area, right about like that. This is just underpainting is all. It helps, I find it helps to get your underpainting in with a little bit of color, you know, not just all dark green or something, but, but add your highlight on top, even though it's not your highlight, it's actually just still your underpainting. But if you can get your, if you can get your overall shapes looking right to begin with, oh, then highlighting is easy, you know, because this is already built in. All you have to do is sprinkle a little, a little light here and a little light there and you're finished. How, easy as that versus if I did the whole thing with a dark green and trying to pull my highlights over that, you know. Okay, so that's pretty good. I'm just gonna change here to a larger brush. I just need to get a lot of this in quickly because there's no reason to mess around. It's just dark in the corner. I will pull some bushes and stuff over this area. That'll work. Just dark, just dark. 
and then I want to be careful. I don't want to go too far. I know I do have my trees here. So I'll just maybe go up a couple inches. Now I'm actually going to do some evergreen trees up here. So it's important that I go ahead and clear off the paint. You can see I started to, to paint. Look at this. See how that's a light gray? That is not going to work. So I stopped and I got my shop towel. Why did that happen? What happened? Because it's simply mixing with, with everything else that's under here. Even when you have such a basic sky, barely, barely anything happening in that sky, still critical to control the paint on the canvas. And same down here. I was planning to do this, but my hands are already messy. So now is the time. I'm going to go ahead and wipe away all of this paint, leaving just the stain of the canvas behind. Look how much better that is. Look at that. It's no longer chalky. It's very dark, very saturated in tone and in, in color. Oh yeah, what a difference, wiping the canvas. If you're not wiping the canvas, you're struggling. <laughs> you're probably struggling to highlight. It's probably all fine and good until you go to highlight. So why, why do these trees like this? Well, because it's fast. These evergreen trees are not the subject of my painting. The, uh, the pink trees, the beautiful tree blossoms are gonna be the, um, that's gonna be the subject of the painting. So at this point, I'm now just going to use these evergreens as contrast because the pink trees don't provide a lot of contrast. So this painting would seem kind of flat, but these big dark evergreens will kind of help. Oh, help to add some of that interest and that variety. I'm also planning to have like a dead tree stump somewhere. I just think it'll add contrast, add detail. I think you'll like it. So now I'm gonna mix up a dark pink color for our springtime trees. Let's get a little blue in there so it's not totally, totally pink and then just a little yellow ochre. Okay, that'll work. Fan brush, a lot of paint. And then just right, well, let's see, where do we want it? My tree trunk's gonna be somewhere right in here. You know, so I'm gonna say, I kinda like that tree there, so maybe try to save some of it. Slide over this way, right in here somewhere. I'm just gonna begin to tap in. I'm not gonna use this color the whole way. Just some of the way. Okay, stop right there. Slide, I know that, well, let's get a little more. Okay, I know it doesn't look right, but let's slide over here and let's do another one. Uh, this one's up here somewhere. Yes, well it is now. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll wipe out that brush so that there's no green in it, because obviously I was picking up some amount of green still. I'm going to take some of our red and white now and just work in that other color. I'm going to put two or three colors in. That's, you know, that's fine. But then where it really gets good is when I take my detail brush, which is what we're going to do, and then just begin to pull out from here my individual petals, or because it's a flowering tree, and so on. Now I'm going to use a fan brush here to just tap on some highlight to the grass. Maybe a little early, but whatever. <laughs> we'll just do it a little early if we want to, I guess. Right here is kind of important, just in that I'd like to see it. There we go. Um, Divide it off from this. These have been thoroughly wiped, you know. It makes all the difference. I kind of like the idea of it sloping down and into our land. I know we're going to put rocks here. We'll have to put the grass back over, but well, I felt like painting grass. <laughs> so painting grass. I like a white highlight on my grass for these kind of springtime paintings because we're going to have kind of white highlights in the trees. It ties things together nicely. At least I think so. And now I'm going to finally get around to this water. And uh, I do want to just tell you what I've been doing. I just took my fan brush and mushed some paint down right here in the, in the corner. Why did I do that? Well, in a few minutes, I'm going to, I'm going to refine that and make it look more like grass. But I'm probably going to mess up some of it as I do my water. So I think, well, let me get my water in first. You know, technically the water should have been done at the same time as the sky. But <laughs> oops. I'm going very, very simple water, extremely simple. It's going to be tons of rocks in here, which are fun, you know, fun to paint if you need help painting rocks. I've got a, a lesson available on the website that'll help you. Very pretty. So I'm just painting in my, my blue. I'll worry about the reflections here later. I'm not really too worried about it. I don't, I don't usually put clear gel under my water, so I don't usually have a lot of mixing when I pull reflections. Not, not like you would if you had something slippery under here. Now I've got some red 
and some blue and umber. And this is to, to mix a black. Uh, almost always I'll have a just a ivory black going. I ran out, not, you know, I've got some in the drawer. I ran out on my palette, so I, rather than going to get more, I just mixed up black because you can do that. And uh, maybe somebody wants to see that. I know I get that question every once in a while. I paint with black. <laughs> uh, I know a lot of people say you shouldn't do that. I don't ever usually find any issue with it. Um, just if you kind of have a, a awareness that if you mix it with certain colors, it will become muddy. Feel free to not do this many rocks, especially if you're not that comfortable with them. Well, having said that, this would be a good time to practice. Probably wouldn't struggle after this. <laughs> Probably wouldn't struggle. You might as well learn how to do what you're not good at so that you'll be good at it and you can paint anything you want. I only recently, I mean, after how long have we been painting together here? You know, 10 years, something like that. Um, maybe eight or nine years, I don't remember. Um, I've only recently, within recent history, <laughs> become comfortable with underwater rocks, you know? I could kind of muddle through them, and, uh, but I'm become more comfortable with them. So there's always stuff that you're continually learning. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight, and I'm, I'm going to show you the trick to highlighting. This is just white, but it's going to mix here with the blue and the pink. Um, the trick is start outside your dark. So here's my dark pink. Start outside. I'm over here in the blue area because that way, when I do work it into the pink, you'll find that uh, it just automatically is brighter on the outside and then darker toward the middle. If I were to start right here where the pink starts, then it would automatically become pink quickly, very quickly. So this is just something I always do. I'm starting with my brightest highlights first. I'll, I'll work my mid-tones in later. Very delicate. I'm using the round brush. I don't want to, I don't want to go so crazy here that we cover it all up and make it like a big solid blob. It still should be fairly Oh, nice and airy. There, it really is pretty easy just to punch these little holes in. I just grabbed some of the, it's easy in this particular painting because the colors are very, <laughs> very easy to mix, you know, no worries. This kind of purple color that I'm trying to represent for these trees back here. It's not so much that we overdid it. It's just, you know, sometimes you go back and you're like, I just want to reduce it. Not because it's wrong, just because that's what I want to do for this. You know, you could just as well leave it dense and pack tight. I think a little open and airy might be neat. All right, now let's do a branch real quick. So I'm going to take some of my dark colors, just brown, black, whatever, and I'm going to slide down and create this tree trunk. There, excellent. Even warm it up slightly. That'll work. Kind of came out light, but I like it. It looks good. It gives a little contrast against the background there. Okay, this is my little quarter inch flat. This is perfect size for what we're doing here. But I'll probably need to finish up with a liner brush. Don't get carried away with this one. Get them too thick, too fast. Just very delicate little limbs, nothing too crazy. Now I'm going to focus on a tree that's right up here in the corner. A little larger strokes, a little bit more separated with the leaves. That'll be, that'll be good. It'll be useful. Try to get um, just a little bit, a little bit of a closer up effect. So all I need for this tree up here is just to see some variation, some light, and some dark. I don't need much other than that. Very open um, because I want, well, actually I do want it to kind of come in through here. That's too dark. That's that's a red tree. That's I don't want a red tree. That's not autumn time. There we go. Bring in just a few of these. We've very, very, very little paint in the sky today. So this is very easy. Very, very easy. Just wipe your brush before you reload it. Keep it clean. And you should have no issues whatsoever. Doesn't hurt to have a yellow sprinkled in and around, you know, a little yellow won't hurt. Good. Now I'll very quickly drop in a fence here. I don't really, uh, I don't know, does it go in front or behind the tree? It doesn't really matter, maybe behind the tree. Just have it wander right through. 
something like that, probably about to that far is all we need. You can see I put in a little fence over here and then we're gonna do one last fence um, just on this land. I may raise that land up a little, we'll see. We just put in a couple, we probably should be doing this little liner brush. A couple of slats there in the boards. Yeah, we'll do that for the liner brush. I need more, I need more land. This is not enough land, just physically not enough space to do what I wanna do in the painting. So I'm gonna raise it up. And might as well, now that my water's done, I might as well go ahead and get a better looking grass texture anyway. So a little blue snuck in there, that's okay. Raise this up. Better, because see now I've got something to work with. All right, we've got our tree in place for the most part. Just an old stump. Now, if we want to make this into a stump, we're going to need to make this, uh, well, we don't need to, but I'm going to make it a little bit thicker there, okay? Using a lot of paint. And to highlight, we may have to use the liner brush, but that'll work. And maybe some sort of a large root here at the bottom. Flares way out, okay, that'll work. Now I'm gonna glop quite a bit of paint on here. Um, to accent highlight this, I'm probably gonna use the liner brush just because it'll, it'll work without creating mud. But I've got a lot of paint caked up here on my little detail brush. I just wanted to see a little bit of this bark texture. See that? Let it skip along darker and darker as you go away from the light source. So I'm just gonna put on a few highlights here to these rocks. Not gonna go overboard. There we go. That'll be nice. I'm actually doing the highlights first, then I'll follow up with the, um, with maybe some more of the mid-tones. That's good, a little warmth in there is okay, you know? There's a lot of warm in this painting, so a little bit of red in our rocks won't hurt. Of course, up here, you would imagine it to be kind of shaded. We've got that fence there, and I just, it just seems shaded to me, so we'll, we'll transition into more of the shaded, shaded color, shadow colors. There. Not a whole lot of paint here. I think I wiped these off a little while ago, I don't remember. There you go. Now I'm gonna finish up this painting here with, of course, the liner brush work. Do a lot of details and probably some accent highlights just, just with a liner brush. That'll work. Not too many branches on this tree. I don't, I don't need it necessarily distracting, but you know, just a few will be good. I'm just gonna go through the whole painting and add as many details as I think it needs. It kind of needs some, if you ask me. Um, something on this fence back here. Just a little bit of railing, you know, something like that. Good enough. Bounce around the whole painting. I think we need a dark here. See, I can add my darks and my lights. I've actually got two liner brushes going. I've got, uh, I don't usually do this, but I got one for light, one for dark. That way, if I see, you know, like for instance right here, oh, I see a highlight that I want. I'm just gonna grab my highlight color and hit it without having to go through all the trouble of trying to load up, you know, clean out the brush and then load a, a white color on. So I've got light and dark. Simple as that. Okay. And back to my dark. And I can add details. You know, just take it as far as you want to. It's probably good. And then begin to place in little grass blades and stuff back here, although there won't be too many. Right over here, let me get a little more. Right over here, I'm going to begin to work in my, my tree trunks and such. Well, that about wraps up this painting today. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button, that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.